Hi, this is Rich Campfield with Ultrapon, and this is uh, part two of our videos on windshield repair curing lights. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you have not seen part one, I would recommend you watch that one. In that video, we speak of how when any liquid is turned into a solid, if it's not done at a uniform rate, it will create tension and weak spots in the cured structure. And the cured structure we're speaking of here with windshield repair is the cured resin. Once it's cured, it's a structure. Now, if you have weak spots or tension in that structure, then you have uh, a significant loss of strength. And since the windshield is a critical safety device, and the whole objective of a repair is to restore the strength and the structural integrity, then you don't want weak spots in there. So with a windshield repair, you could do everything right and then go and ruin it when you uh, go to cure it. And so we're uh, disclosing what the others don't disclose, don't, don't disclose, and that is the intensity and uniformness of those curing lights. Uh, some of them uh, apparently do not have a UV light meter. Now, this is a UV light meter, and I would recommend anybody in the windshield repair business to buy one of these. Uh, they only cost about $150, but they will give you a read on the UV energy available if you're outside. You can use it to pull that off and, and see how much energy you're getting from the sun. Uh, the sun is our number one recommendation whenever you want to cure a windshield repair because the energy is uniform. And um, this will also allow you to test your light to see when your batteries are low and when you need to uh, uh, change the battery or recharge it. So it's an invaluable uh, tool to have if you repair windshields, and I recommend you all... Uh, go on Amazon and look for one of these. It's called the UVA 365 UV light meter. And I'm going to show you how it works. It reads the intensity and then when you move it along the meter, it will tell you uh, if the intensity is changing, which is what you don't want. You don't want the intensity changing. Now we uh, spoke of in our first uh, windshield repair curing light video about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and we spoke about how uh, the sunlight is uniform, followed by fluorescent bulbs for curing, and the worst was the uh, LEDs. And uh, what we spoke of about there is the LED lights that were on the market, they were all over the place. The intensity as you move them along the meter was jumping all over the place. And what that means is it's going to cause weak spots in your cured resin if it's not uniform. And high intensity is bad because it's going to pull to one side or the other immediately. So we now made a LED light that has uniform and filtered UV energy. So we are going to show you that the uh, this is the one and only UV curing light you know, in the industry right now that is known to be uniform and filtered to the right intensity. So I'm going to show that new one to you now. And I, by the way, this is totally portable. Uh, this is an, uh, a lithium battery. Uh, keep it fully charged. And this, uh, this is all you need in your toolbox. And it... Uh, See, here's the charger for it. But what we want to see is uniform energy as we go across the meter here. See how it stays around 1.7? You can get it on here right first. There we go. Here, right around two. Now that is uniform UV energy across your crack. 
And this is going to cure in one to two minutes. Cure a pit in one minute. So that is the LED light on the market that is as good as a fluorescent. Now well, here is a fluorescent. Watch how it also gives off uniform energy as we go across it. Now this is not a, a little less powerful than that LED, but it still cures in one to two minutes. And this is what Ultrabond has always produced, was curing lights that were uniform because we have a UV light meter. I, I question whether some of the other manufacturers in this business have a simple UV light meter or are they not knowledgeable about having uniform energy? Okay, so this was our number one recommended light to use was a fluorescent in our first video. And uh, now we have one that is uh, uniform and is LED. There was 30 bulbs here and they are at the proper distance. And the way we got this to be uniform is from this uh, lens cover. So what happens is, is these bulbs will light up the inside of that lens and then when it comes out the other side, it is uniform and filtered. We had to cut it down because too fast will also create tension when you cure it too fast. So we don't like to go near three on this meter. We like to do around one or two on, on a crack and even under, under one on a chip repair. Okay, so now let me show you what happens with one of these... Uh, flashlights okay first off if you're going to cure it under pressure you're going to be hitting it at the side okay uh, along there alongside the injector which means it's not going to be hitting a, the uh, repair on a uniformly it's going to be hitting one side and pulling molecules to one side now you can see here it's jumping and that is a significant jump and the intensity is too high so let's say this was your injector and you set it right here. You're pulling everything off to one side. The only thing this could be good for is for curing the pit on top of a pit like that. But look at that intensity. That's through the roof right there. So I wouldn't use it anything myself. But the only thing you could use that for is to cure the pit. And you don't want to turn it on until it's in position because if it's that high intensity as you even go towards it it's going to start pulling uh, molecules over to one side or the other so to use this to secure the pit you'd want to set it right on the pit and then turn it on and that's just that's way too high you like it around this uh, two and under there are three and under right around there Now we showed you this one in our first video. Well, this was one of the uh, first LED lights that was came from China. And it was sent to all of us uh, manufacturers in the U.S. I did not uh, accept this because of the intensity of it. It was all over the place. So let me show you here. First off, look at the distance on these LED lights. And there is a coating here, but this is not cutting out any filter. So for this to give off uniform and uh, proper intensity, this cover would, would have to be changed to a different material. So, but let's see this. Okay, see, and that's too high. And here it is, 14, 12, 13, jumping. See it jumping all over the place, and it's high intensity. going from 13 to 20 something 
So you see right here, when you put the bulb right in the middle, you're going to get a high reading. And then in between the bulb, it's going to drop. Okay, now what you're going to, with that, that's going to happen here, is the uh, resin. Now if you put this on a crack, you're going to have a hot spot there, and a hot spot here. In between the bulbs, you're going to have tension. So you throw that on a crack, you're going to have tension in between the bulbs. And again, uh, just like a windshield replacement, it, sh it rears its ugly head when there is a crash. If you get uh, Google alerts under the, under the word windshield, you'll see news articles every day about uh, impacts and penetrations of windshields. And uh, with Ultrabond, we want this to, our repairs to be 100%. We don't want to leave any weak spots so that there is any compromising impact and penetration of the uh, windshield. The windshield has a Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Test, which is uh, impact and penetration resistance. And the Ultrabond repairs in all of those tests for the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard, our, our repairs remained intact, meaning the glass broke, the repairs did not. Okay, so uh, we've showed you those two lights. We have one more light that we want to show you. Now, see, this one had high intensity, and it was uh, all over the place. The, the intensity of every single bulb on here was different, and in between it, it would drop. Okay, now this one here, the idea is this goes over... This goes over the tool, and the whole idea was to give it uniform energy throughout the circle. Unfortunately, if you look at this though, these bulbs are not all the way around it. And uh, LED bulbs, again, like we said in our first uh, video, they give off different UV energy. Uh, so each one of those bulbs are going to give off UV energy. So let's see what we're going to get on the read here when we go around it. So each bulb is going different. Going from zero there, of course, over here it's going to hit a zero. So since these bulbs are giving off different UV energy, it's going to not be symmetrical right in the center, which was the whole idea of this, is when you put it down into the center, it would be symmetrical. See that? You're getting almost nothing. Yeah, so we did some tests with this light, and we had a very hard time with it um, during thermal cycling. It did not do very well at all. So, wouldn't recommend that light or that light on anything. Uh, sunlight, it's free. Fluorescent lights we've always sold because they're uniform. And now our new one and only LED curing light in the windshield repair industry currently that has uniform and filtered UV energy, meaning that this is not, this will enhance your uh, resin capability of restoring the strength to the glass. There'll, there'll be no compromising here. So now it's now available on our web store. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And again, get yourself a UV meter. And uh, this will protect you and your customers because you'll know uh, what your product is doing to your repair. Not much money to spend, 150 bucks, when you're repairing a critical safety device. Thank you.